Well, you just heard that. We have two gentlemen from the city of San Francisco who have two significant things to say. They're also in a hurry. So I'm gonna, it's an honor to introduce the president of the Board of Supervisors of San Francisco, David Chu. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to welcome the grassroots of the internet here to Civic Center Plaza, and I want to welcome you all to City Hall. And I want to let you know that there are leaders in San Francisco here locally who believe and agree that today is an appropriate day for an internet blackout, and SOPA does not need to continue as it is. We all recognize, we all recognize that internet piracy is a real phenomenon. That being said, this piece of legislation is not the right way to go. We need to figure out how to craft a federal policy that does not stifle innovation, that does not stifle entrepreneurialism on the technological superhighway that we have today, and that does not kill jobs. And I am here to ask our federal representatives from Congress to rework this piece of legislation to make sure that it balances the needs that we all recognize are important to deal with but also ensures that, again, the creativity that the Bay Area, that California, that San Francisco represents remains strong. I'm also here to announce that on Tuesday at our next Board of Supervisors meeting, I will be introducing a resolution that I will ask my colleagues at the Board of Supervisors to support that says that SOPA in its current form should not be passed and to ask our federal representatives to ensure that is the case. I want to thank Mayor Ed Lee for joining me in helping to sponsor this resolution. We want to make sure that San Francisco states our concerns strongly on this, that the electronic frontier is taken care of, and is that we, as we move into the 21st century, that we are doing the right thing, again, for our local economy, for innovation, and for technology. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, two weeks ago, Ed Lee announced that he is appointed uh, a first time ever Chief Innovation Officer of San Francisco. His name is Jay Nath, he's standing right behind me. Uh, Jay is gonna read a statement from Mayor Ed Lee, who today is at the Council of Mayors meeting in Washington, D.C. and consistent with the statement that Ed Lee is making here through Jay Nath. He is also petitioning the uh, Conference of Mayors to take action as well. So here's Jay Nath. Thank you, Ron. Uh, I'm really excited to be here in front of all of you. The, the passion, the energy of this community and the influence that you've had locally and nationally coming together as a community, technologist, I think is, is really something to be proud of. Um, and I'm really proud of the fact that Mayor Lee and his administration is, is opposing uh, SOPA. And um, here's a little statement from, from the mayor that I want to read to you. Innovative technology and new media companies in the San Francisco Bay Area and across the nation are creating hundreds of thousands of good jobs and driving our economic recovery. While protecting intellectual property against private piracy is extremely important, we must not take steps that stifle the free exchange of information on the internet or harm critical engines for jobs and economic growth. As currently proposed, both SOPA and PIPA are overkill. This is a new frontier, and I strongly urge members of the House and Senate to consider all the issues at stake more carefully and seek greater input from all impacted communities to help craft a more focused solution that protects against piracy while preserving the free flow of information that is a cornerstone of the 21st century economy. As a nation, we cannot afford to undermine our innovation economy, jeopardize thousands of jobs, and threaten the basic architecture of the internet. Thank you. Okay, now I have something to say. Um, uh, I'm Ron Conway, uh, resident of San Francisco, born here, uh, third generation San Franciscan. I have invested in over 600 internet companies since 1994. 
Uh, to give you a feel for that, Mark Andreessen was still a student at the University of Illinois in 1994. Uh, and investing in the internet was the best decision I've ever made uh, as an investor. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to invest in companies like Google, Facebook, and Twitter, all of whom would be severely impacted by this proposed legislation. Technology and the internet have created and allowed free expression never available to the public before. That is a benefit that will be reaped for generations. Let's not take it away. Even more importantly, technology and the internet has created four million jobs and counting. The internet today is the biggest contributor to new jobs in the United States. We have giant companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, and even more important and more relevant are the companies that can't afford lobbyists. Those are the startups. The startups and the companies with five and ten people that are tripling every year. We cannot stifle their innovation. The technology... Thank you. Technology and the internet equals the heart of innovation and job creation. The technology industry has done nothing but contribute to the economy and free expression. We are determined to work respectfully with Congress to stop this legislation immediately. We cannot censor free expression that the internet has created and helped bring the world closer together. Congress, please work with us on efforts to stop this legislation. Once again, technology has created over four million jobs and we are the biggest contributor of new jobs in the United States. Please do not hurt that. With that, I'm going to introduce a luminary in the internet world. Um, his name is Brewster Kale, and he runs a nonprofit called the Internet Archive right here in San Francisco. Brewster. This is an incredibly important day. How do we make this work better? How about that? Yeah. A little better? Okay, this is an incredibly important day. I've not been aware of anything like it uh, before. We, the people that have built the internet, are not getting much of a vote in Washington compared to the copyright cartels. But today, by bringing our sites down, Today, our vote is being heard. Today, two million visitors that would go to the most popular library on the internet is getting greeted by a black page to raise awareness and to protest two bad bills that are working their way through Washington. Archive.org has gone down. Today, key websites have gone dark. They've gone dark to send a message, an unprecedented message, and a message we don't want to send this way. The idea of bringing down our services, denying our users what it is we give freely, is something we don't want to do. But we do it to show how fragile the internet is and how much Washington can mess it up. The incredibly myopic point of view of some of our legislators to try to protect some corporations' movies and music files by placing a blacklist system all over the world makes no sense. China 
already has such a system, and they block archive.org and the holdings of millions of books from all Chinese citizens because they have a blacklist system that is put in place by a third party where there's no recourse and there's no way, no due process. This does not belong in America. It does not belong in the world. Our legislators do not seem to know how to keep things in balance. They're thinking, they are living in a lobbyist's bubble. All of the news that we've generated um, that is based on all of this wonderful action has only gotten comments from politicians, from the White House, from Congress, to say that they want to fix some parts of this legislation. We don't want this thing fixed. We want it stopped now. So our task is ongoing. We have seen a burst of energy, but we need sustained pressure. But this is not easy for us. We're busy building the internet. So how do we do this? There are, uh, there are organizations that do represent our interests in the legislature. EFF in San Francisco, and public knowledge in Washington, D.C. If you don't know of these organizations, you should. We have so little impact in D.C. because we spend so little time and little money on it. I find it distasteful to slather money on politicians to try to create laws. But we can spend our time on it. And maybe they could use your help. When you are in DC, especially if you're an inventor of some cool new widget that is threatened by legislation, contact public knowledge to see if there's a congressman or a few that you should go and visit. I've done this. It was a very sobering experience, I should tell you. But they live in a lobbyist's bubble. They only hear from very well-paid people that are paid to stand outside their doors. Let's spend a little bit of our time, uh, and there are organizations that will help, to be able to get some of our messages across. Let's pop this lobbyist bubble and let the internet shine. Thank you very much.